everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today, I'm going to be letting you know why I think the autoloaders are absolutely fantastic on my my free-to-play account. Now, interestingly enough, uh, my free-to-play account is starting to reach end game, so to say. I've got I've pretty much made my way through towards the majority of the tier 10 tanks, and slowly but surely, I'm going to have all of the blueprints unlocking all of the remaining tier 10 tanks. And so it kind of becomes this awkward credit grind, really. And what's the best way to grind credits? Well, it's to play the premium tanks that I've got from Mission Marathons when I can have access to free days of premium, either from the Battle Pass or from participating in Wargaming's events or getting them from things like Twitch drops. And so the free-to-play account is almost finished, really. Five years after I started, I'd say by the end of the year, I'm going to have all of the vehicles unlocked. And so, I'm coming to this stage where now I can actually give you better advice, I feel, about what vehicles are absolutely horrible free-to-play and what vehicles are pretty actually okay free-to-play. Or not as good as they would be if you were paying to win, but manageable. So, I've come to the realization that a premium consumable, a food consumable, just like I said in one of my previous videos this week, is absolutely massive on light tanks and medium tanks because you can get enough statistics in certain areas that you don't have to invest into things like silly things like view range or maybe even the accuracy of the vehicle and you can dump all of the statistics into say should we say firepower or mobility so the premium consumable makes a massive difference on vehicles where the statistics aren't down to aspects like armor or in the case of this tier 10 Czechoslovakian medium, the unload speed. There are certain things that having, shall we say, premium consumable, bond vents, like a vent directive, improving your cruise skill is what I'm saying, will not affect. And that is the intraclip reload on an autoloader, as well as things like armor and hit points. And so I found on my free to play account, a tank like the mouse is awesome because there's not really too much difference between a mouse on my main account and a mouse on my free to play account with regards to that. And also I'm finding the vehicles autoloaders specifically like the TVP can also do great things as well. The TVP on a pay to win account is going to fire just as fast one and a half seconds into clip reload as on my free to play account which the same couldn't be said for something like a tortoise or an object 140, for example, because I know that my tortoise or my 140 is literally going to fire 5% faster on my main account. And that 5% can be the difference between you trading evenly against a player or even getting out traded or uh, hopefully just managing to farm them and out trade them and get two shots in. That's the crazy thing. I know on my main account, poof, that artillery shell was close. When I'm using a premium consumable and I got like bond vents, bond rammer, when push really comes to shove, I know that if I fire at the same time or even slightly after somebody who's playing the same tank that I'm going to be able to reload to fire before they do. And that is literally just a, a pay to win advantage inside the game. But the vehicles that I'm going to be talking about today, the TVP, I've also got gameplay in another auto loading tank coming up. They just feel so darn good free to play. And especially a tank like this, the TVP, where the gold rounds aren't really even that much of a tremendous advantage. You can do some amazing things free to play in this vehicle. And I feel like the raw essence of the TVP, why is the TVP good? The TVP is good because it's got damage per minute and because it dumps four rounds in four and a half seconds. And my TVP, while it's going to have a slightly longer reload on my free to play account, still has all of the strengths, which is this. One shot, quick reload. Second shot into the tracks. Oof, that was a little bit scary. Put the extra one into his lower plate and now hope that I've locked them in place for the Jagdpanzer E100. The Jaeger who helps me out massively there by finishing off the FV215B183. I don't know whether they received a shell from the FV215B183. Doesn't look like they did because they're actually pointing their gun towards me and instead they took a hit from the 60TP. And so this aggressive play in the center was made possible by Captain Jagdpanzer, E100 on our team, who's called BKE2003. Well, BKE, if you are watching this video, a massive thank you to you for all of the teamwork that we're going to have in this game. So, in this kind of a scenario, it's a little bit sketchy. 
Unfortunately, the TVP is great at dumping out its rounds, but when you're playing against really high alpha damage tanks, it doesn't matter if you're able to do 1,280 damage within four and a half seconds of the first shot. A Jaegeru is going to do that instantly if they manage to hit you. And a 60 TP has vastly more hit points than I do. And so if I take 750 damage from the 60 TP, it'll be destroying me 50% of the time on the second shot. However, unfortunately, the Jagdpanzer 100 on our team takes a hit, but he actually returns fire as well. I'm going to use Intuition to load out a gold mag here, put one into his lower plate, actually bounce the second, look for the high cheeks there, but decide that I've just got to go for the lower plate anyway. So we put three out of four in there. Unfortunately, that mag does end up costing us 20,000 credits to do just about 960 damage to the Jagdpanzer 100. And so as long as you use things like intuition on an autoloader it's actually pretty darn awesome free to play and the tvp with a dedicated loader only has to have one wasted skill slot to so to say for a, an ability that will save you tons and tons of credits and allow you to at least break even on your tier 10 tanks i could have probably managed to pen some regular rounds there on the 60 tp however the standard rounds on this tank they've only got 248 millimeters of pen so when you are dealing with heavies in these kind of situations it is far better to pay the gold price and to pen your shots than it is to uh to ricochet a shell and then possibly lose such a close game before we manage to shut down the Jagdpanzer 100 there and before the mouse managed to deal with the 60 tp this game was neck and neck and it's still neck and neck on hit points luckily we're up by two kills and I want to take the moment to give BKE2003 another big thumbs up there. Because I know without them in their Jagdpanzer E100 saving me against the FV, I put trust in them and then helping me to be able to get against the Jagdpanzer E100 by half healthing them and putting that pressure up on the 60 TP, I would have definitely be done there. And we would not now be in a position where there's a possibility that we can win this game. However, there is an FV4005 on the enemy team, and everybody knows that an FV4005 hitting a TVP, well, the TVP is not going to have many hit points left after that, right? And so this is the part of the game where the damaging build that I'm using, vents, vert stabs, and an aiming device, kind of becomes a little bit of a hindrance. Luckily, the TVP has 410 meters base view range, and so even with vents, as long as you've got skills like recon and situational awareness on your commander, you have more than enough view range on this vehicle. And you wouldn't even look at taking coated optics on this vehicle. I do have a second build, however, where I will take a vision system and an exhaust on this where I drop the uh, the gun handling. Um, that's absolutely fine. And then you can start to really work those big bushy maps. And not only be a ruthless damage dealer, but also to provide some support for the enemy team. Well, not, not the enemy team. Hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully your team, right? With vision. On the enemy team. So unfortunately we take a big old shell there from the gorilla but tantalizingly it actually significantly low rolls that means that now we have 749 hit points and because we have 749 hit points that means we're a 50 50 from being destroyed by the gorilla on the enemy team. So it looks like we spot the GW100 the artillery on our team finishes them off preventing us from picking up our fourth kill but I'm not too fussed as it's just about trying to get through this one that matters. So our mouse is on 1,068. There's no way the griller is going to be able to finish them off in a single shot. So all I have to do really here is just stay relaxed, just stay chill, and just support the mouse. As long as I don't get caught in this scenario, I should be absolutely fine. And here we go, intuition, hopefully paying off again as we're loading a very rare but situational high explosive mag. Now I'm doing 420 damage times by four. That's 1,680 damage in four and a half seconds but with only 50 millimeters of pen i'm going to have to aim well to ensure that we shut down street max playing their griller on the enemy team so in this situation all i have to do is relax just wait for the mouse to get the proxy spot on the griller the griller was aiming at me so thank goodness i didn't go around the corner now just come around the corner and start blazing away that's 422 damage against the griller they're going to try and flank the mouse they get stunned by our rt the mouse manages to put a big old shell into them and are we going to get the uh, last couple of shells off right into the back of the tank? Wham, bam, thank you, bam. That was 7,500 combined and a glorious game. But of course, it wasn't just me. It was also, as we said, 
BKE in the Jagdpanzer E100, who, who basically carried this game as, as much as I did. Now, I'm kind of going to go against what I said just a little bit uh, and play a tier 10 light tank. But this isn't any tier 10 light tank. The AMX 13105 is not just focused on its scouting capacity. And trust me, this vehicle will be way better with, an, a, premium, with a premium consumable. But if you're going to play any tier 10 light tank, I think the AMX 13105 might be one of, if not the best, free to play. Because I'm willing to sacrifice uh, a little bit of the, the camera rating on this vehicle. On my main account, I don't even have to run coated optics on this vehicle. Yesterday, I just managed to 3 mark the AMX 13105 on my main account uh, with some, all in all, a really impressive session. I found new love for this vehicle. It feels like it's a bat chat that doesn't suck in 2023. And if I'm going to get matched up against someone on the enemy team, I'd rather get matched up against a light tank and then hopefully outplay them or do some fat damage later on in the battle than play like a bat chat and maybe get matched up against a CS-63 that just wins the center position or a Udez that ends up hold down against me and I feel as if I'm not able to have the big impact. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the Bat Chat 25T uh, is useless in the game right now, but it definitely doesn't feel nearly as competitive as the 13105. So, the 13105, I have two builds for this tank. One is a spotting build where I'm on my free to play account, I use vision system vents and coated optics on my main account i will drop the uh the coated optics because i have enough view range and i will take an exhaust instead and i can get up to about 50 percent camo on the move in that way in a 13105 which is outrageous now my free to play account is not even going to be close to that i'll probably be packing more like 40 percent camo and trust me there's a huge difference between 40 and 50 percent moving camo it's kind of the difference between uh, a manticore uh, and I guess the 13105 on kind of like my, my main account. Uh, so the, the, the free to play light tanks definitely do feel painful within that regard. But as long as you just don't expect to have silly amounts of insane camo, then it, it, they can still be really good. And especially the 13105 with its intraclip reload of 2.73 seconds, which you can't improve with a premium consumable or with outrageous crew skills or bond fence or anything like that. This thing still claps. Talking about claps, that FV4005 on our team hit an absolute beautiful shell to destroy their EBR105. And then as I finish off the AMX 13105, well, not finish them off, but provide the vision that gets them finished off on our team. Now I am the last light tank standing. And now we can just play. And it looks like there's a little lost Yeageru in the middle of the map. I don't know what they're trying to find. Maybe they're trying to find Grandma's house down in the swamp. Well, unfortunately, you're finding some pretty rough bandits in the swamp as well, Mr. Yeageru. Taking 1,500 damage there from the FV405, which was a penned, but still low rolled and getting shut down by Blackjack in their Leopard. I give the Leopard a big thumbs up. You'll see that I'm actually recently been trying to use the communication features inside World of Tanks more and more, and even just giving thumbs up to my allies when they do things that either help me out with the extra spotting, because I feel like if you can try and instill that sense of uh, respect and, and team play that maybe you can actually, well, camaraderie I should say, that you can increase the team play in your team, which might mean that they're more likely to help you out later or continue doing what hopefully they did that made you happy, i.e. dumping in damage on your vision. So we are doing fantastically so far in the 13105 but I realised that with this game being neck and neck and to all intents and purposes, uh, we're going to lose the north of this map. Uh, I have to be more aggressive. And so now we're going to go in free to play 13105, one round into the front, two rounds. And it doesn't look like the 50B could actually elevate the turret there maybe enough to be able to shoot me. They fall and now we're up to seven and a half thousand. So we're going to feign that we're running away again. Um, dodge the FV4005. Uh, or maybe even the gorilla firing an HE shell, which is what I was concerned about. But in this situation, my gut instinct was right. We've lost the north. We're down 4,000 hit points. We're down two tanks. If I wasn't making these aggressive plays, this game would be done. And this is one of the most important skills that you can develop in World of Tanks to realize when you have to get it done. 
we come up behind, we kill the Super Conqueror, we kill the Udez, we track the VZ-55, we apply some pressure to them. Sounds like we avoid another FE-405 shell possibly from the side. I guess I'm getting lucky. But again, you've got to roll the dice in these scenarios. If I didn't go in and finish off that flank, then the enemy would have had a pincer on us. And then the Griller would be free to have shot all of our friends. All of these tank destroyers would be getting spotted out. The heavies would trundle across the north. And a game that was evidently possibly winnable, not going to spoil the outcome, would have been undeniably lost. Or it would have been pretty darn likely that we were going to lose this. And so it's very important that you read the map. You see when a pincer is going to be closed and you do everything that you can to ensure that that doesn't happen for your team. And even if you're in the free-to-play top-tier light tank without all of the uh, the field mods here, we're still packing 8,500 combined. So I'm going to sneak my way in. I've still got to be fairly careful. I, on my main account, I probably wouldn't have to be so careful right now with the extra camo. But I still got to be careful with the FE405 who spotted. If I get spotted, then he could dump me from anywhere. He could dump me from this location. He could dump me from that location. The artillery could manage to hit me. So I've just got to play tighter and be more careful on this account. Now, I know knocking down the tree is a little sus. But luckily, it doesn't look like the FE405 is going to get us. And we provide a little bit more vision, a little bit more tracking on the Object 780. And suddenly, a game which looked like it was going to be a horrible defeat is now looking firmly in our favor. And we are packing 9,600 combined. Honestly, when we made those flanking plays towards the south, I thought this was going to be a ridiculous magical game because I thought there was a lot for me to do on the other side of the map. Interestingly enough, we haven't actually got that much combined since we dealt with the VZ-55. Only about 1,500 or so combined. I was thinking that the enemies had a good amount of hit points more than they did. But you've also got to understand that if your opponents are outside your render distance and your team as well, you can't see how many hit points they exactly have. And so the enemies had less hit points than I anticipated. But still, while you have to take that into your... Your, your your judgment of the situation. You've still got to play as if possibly the enemies do have that 4,000 hit point advantage on the other flank. But do take into account that numbers of hit points can change depending on where the enemies are with regards to your render distance. Uh, unfortunately, you're seeing that... Um... <laughs> You're seeing that while you can't improve the intra clip by paying to win with a premium consumable and by using like bounty vents or bond vents, you can definitely improve your your accuracy and you can definitely improve your aim time as those two shells fly very wide. But boom, this was a big game of World of Tanks, 10,500 that we saw. And this is why the Amex 13105 is actually one of my favorite tanks to play, not only on my main account, as a lot of you who were watching my stream yesterday will have seen, but also on the free-to-play account. Because you can't improve one of the most important statistics on an autoloader, the intra-clip reload. All right, it's one more for the road. We're gonna be playing in the TVP once again, and we're spawning on probably one of my favorite maps, Mines. I really enjoy this map because the Gameplay is just accelerated, and while I don't always like turbo versions of World of Tanks, I do like it when you get to be confident and just go for it and see who's going to win that initial engagement, and then to the victor, the spoils. And in this case, this Rheimatile Panzerwagen is going to uh, not have a very good situation here. The EBR, interestingly on the enemy team, decides to leave the hill, I guess thinking, oh no, the TVP's on the hill, he's going to farm me, and ends up taking a huge amount of hit points while leaving. And I'm pretty happy. One of the only advantages about being on my free-to-play account is because I use a fire extinguisher instead of a premium consumable, I don't actually repair my fuel tanks so much. I'll only repair my fuel tanks if I think I've got like a long cooldown. Uh, to be able to recover my repair kit. So one of the one of the very few advantages of this account, uh, and this is just TVP 101. We got up on the hill. We dumped a full mag into a Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, about 20, 
30 seconds later, we dump a full magazine divided amongst two heavy tanks. This is the full damagey build. And unfortunately, as you can see, just free to play problems. I've decided that I like this vehicle so much free to play that I put an aiming device, the bounty aiming device on this, but I don't have the 3 million credits to be able to upgrade it. Uh, why would I do that? 3 million credits is like half a tier 10 tank that I could buy. The idea of um, spending 3 million credits to be able to gain that tiny advantage on one tank, it's just mad when I think about it. So yeah, just free to play problems with my equipment set up here because remember, the bounty equipment isn't going to get a bonus in any slot, but it's not going to be any better than regular equipment until you dump that 3 mil on being able to upgrade it. It really scares me when I think about it, just how much I must have spent on my main account. I probably have about 50 different pieces of bounty equipment. I've probably dumped 150 million credits, which I've spent 150 to possibly 300 hours of my life with credit boosters grinding. That's terrifying. You're telling me five to 10 days of my waking life has been just to upgrading bounty equipment to give me micro advantages on 50 of my 700 different vehicles? That is, that's, that's absolutely terrifying. Uh, but that's just the reality of video games and these grindy, hardcore, competitive video games that we play. And unfortunately, games like this, where quite often you're not just playing because you want to, you're playing for the advantages to be able to, uh, to feel epic on the battlefield. Which is why having this account is just so important. It, it gives me like a realistic idea of how, I don't know, Please do let me know in the comments down below. Are you a completely free player? Or, like, without going into specifics, how much do you think that you spend on World of Tanks every month or or each year? Personally, for me, now that what, what, what World of Tanks Plus is in the game, that's most of the money that I would spend on this on my main account. But I've done it all over the past. I've spent tons and tons on this game to be able to get my account into a, a half-decent position. But never have I spent anything on this account. And um, look at this TVP just printing it, printing damage right now. This is 6,000 damage in the first three and a half minutes of this game. But boy, are we not done yet. There's still 6,000 hit points on the enemy team. However, when you have 14 versus 5, those hit points start to wilt away very quickly. But luckily, as I said, the TVP has got such an awesome gun. You have more than enough DPM and more than enough burst damage to be able to pump it out. Oh, what a shame. The Minotauro on the enemy team, which is now top of the tree uh, just today, unfortunately uses a fire extinguisher. But there you go. That is 7,400 combined in just over four minutes. Hopefully you can see why this vehicle just feels so awesome free to play. Because it's not really a tank that's about the gold rounds. It's not really a tank that's about the, 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 the random statistics on this vehicle. It's about dumping out four 100 millimeter shells in four and a half seconds before your opponents can even react. So auto loaders, they're not exactly the easiest vehicles to play inside World of Tanks, and I wouldn't really recommend them for new players. However, if any of you are hardcore free-to-play players who think they've played enough games to have an idea of all of the different vehicles and how they compete on the battlefield. If you want to be nearly as competitive as somebody with all of the bells and whistles and paid advantages, then maybe you should consider picking up a couple of autoloaders because boy, at least in my, for my feels, they perform well, even free to play. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you loved these, these three banging free to play games, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase, live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And today I'm gonna to be featuring the new top of the tree Minotauro. And so if you wanna see why it is arguably the best tank destroyer in all of the game then come along right now i'll start at tier one work my way up towards tier 10 so you can see if it's worth grinding this month so really looking forward to seeing you all live right now and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon